Welcome to another episode of Redeemed Otaku, your horticulture-loving podcast for discussion and reviews on all things anime-related from a Christian worldview. Nyan! Nyan? Nyan-chan? I am your leafy host, Bex. Did you say leafy? Yes. And with me tonight, as he struggles to find water, is... Tim. I have to put in something for you because you're always like... Not introducing yourself, so in the, in know, the spirit of the podcast, people know what. What do you want me to start saying? The bearded wonder. Sure. <laughs> this seems ostentatious. Nyan. Uh. <laughs> so we are here with a review episode, an actual review episode, something we haven't done in quite a number of months. We are reviewing anime yes that we both have actually watched yes Mm -hmm. we are reviewing the show kamurikusa kamurikusa or as they would say in japanese kamurikusa or as they would say in english smokeweed (laughs) all right that's what it means excellent excellent I'm so glad there's many jokes involved in that possible description yeah right (sighs) Yes, yes. So, do we want to just jump right into it? Sure, let's do it. All right. Well, first of all, I kind of want to do something a little bit different. Oh, that's great. So, if this is your first episode that you're listening to, um, obviously, we're going to be spoiling the entire show. Yeah, pretty much. We're not going to try and hide or anything. We're just going to just blurt it all out. If you're the type who, man, I got to see it before I listen to it, stop now. Yep. Hit the pause button. Go watch, what is it, 12 episodes? 12 episodes, yep, yep. It's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Yep. Um, And then come back and listen. Yes. Or just listen, and we'll spoil it, and you can decide if you want to watch. Sure, sure. Uh, But I don't really think there was too much of a content warning, since we're kind of talking about going and watching it. No, I think, um, honestly, I was very pleasantly surprised on that aspect of things. It is very refreshing to find an anime that, um... Told a good story. Yeah, told a a story. It didn't have any kind of... It featured a cast of, you know, mix of characters. Girls and uh, and And a boy. a lot of tropes. A lot of tropes. Um, but not bad tropes. Not bad tropes, but you had your cat girl and your lolly mates and, you know, stuff like that. But nothing that... There was not, not like, oh my goodness, look there at her panties or yeah, anything weird any like that all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. nothing popped up that made me say, ah. Oh. And not even any jokes about it, too. No, it was it was so. very clean. Yes. And I was very, very happy to enjoy a clean anime without any kind of reservations. Yep. So, that being said, go watch it. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Or, like I said, let us spoil it for you. And, uh... Decide if you want to watch it based on this review, which may or may not be wonderful. (laughs) All right, so I shall read a quick synopsis that I wrote. Mm. Six sisters are on a never-ending quest in search of water when they happen upon a young man who is very different from them. His fascination with the Kamurakusa that seems to connect all life leads them all on a journey of discovery and survival. Oh, very good. You like that? Yeah, did you pull that off of IMDb? No, okay. I wrote that all on my wow. own. I do my own work Classic. here. Classic. Classic. <laughs> all right, well, you heard it first here. In a world. In a world. Where I didn't there say is that. No water. Well, no, I didn't say that. No. No. It's okay. See, I'm actually practicing my synopsis writing for when we play Beyond Balderdash. Hmm. And then I can just... Is that the whole... <laughs> That's the whole purpose. Mechanic? The whole purpose of me uh, writing my own synopsis nice. so I can have them tucked away in my mind and, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
So, anywho, so this was a 2019 anime television series produced by Studio Yaoyorozu. Yaoyorozu. There you go. They also Directed, did that animal one. Yeah, Kimono Friends. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, directed by Tatsuki, music by Tetsuya Takahashi. I couldn't find a whole, I couldn't find really anything on any of those guys. Well, um, from everything I've been able to find out, mm -hmm. it's, he's a, he's a very, um, sort of new director mm -hmm. in anime sure. and, um, he was bringing in new talent, mm. um, to kind of fresh. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, obviously I'm reading second and third hand sources. I'm not reading original Japanese stuff. Right. Um, but it, that does seem to make a lot of sense based on this content and, and and stuff like that. Yeah. It was based on a web series, apparently, which I mm -hmm. haven't been able to find anything on it in English other than some little synopsis here and there. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been able to... I've been able to find clips of the web series, but it's all in Japanese, so... Yeah. Um, but it looks really cool. Like, actually, the web series has a slightly different animation technique, and I, I kind of dig it, you know, yeah. a little more pastel, a little... A little different, but yeah, yeah. Well, the the look and the feel of the show is right up our alley. We love the post apocalyptic. It is. It's definitely <laughs> post apocalyptic. Um, a lot of post apocalyptic theme. That's mm -hmm. the whole thing. Um, it's a very pretty show. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, the the colors. We'll see. The background is very muted yeah. and dark. Yeah. So when you do have color, it's just it's, it, pops right yeah, out. It at pops you. out, and mm -hmm. it's all computer rendering, but it's not all 3D animation. Mm -hmm. um, so it has that um, unique property of just looking good in most of its scenes and stuff. There's right. very few scenes where you were like, oh, what happened there? You right, know? right. But uh, I mean, there was a couple bits and pieces, but nothing. That's what, I, that's what I wrote is actually the CGI was a little janky in a couple places, yeah. especially when it involves the characters manipulating objects. Right, when they were close up to things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some blending going on. Mm -hmm. Like, um, are you merging with Midori? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, for the most part, it was very clean. Yeah. Um, it was very, uh, like I said, very pretty. Um, the colors really stood out. Yeah. The animation was striking. Mm -hmm. um, the animation of the girls in their tropes was, was spot on. I mean, it you had the, like I said, the lolly maid, you had the cat girl, you had the yeah. fighter girl, and they were, you know, spot on. I mean, it was exactly what you would expect to see in that type yeah. of, um, if you were an otaku of any of those kind of genres, it's exactly what you would expect to see. Right, so, right. Yeah. I, w I mentioned the colors of the Kamurakusa and how they kind of had some functionality yeah. based on their color, yeah. and how the blue is life-giving protection, Right. and red was obviously bad. Kind of like blame. Kind of, except <laughs> the girls were all red. They were. They weren't red. They were like a purple color. They weren't red like the red bugs, but they were definitely reddish. Yeah, they but were they. Ruddy. But their their color was their own unique. color. Yeah, I, no, I'll agree with that. So yeah, and they were kind of a blend of different other colors. I think so. Sure, that's beside the point. That I is. Guess. I was just trying to throw in a blame joke. Sure, blame. I forgot you, to yell it. <laughs> no, you, did, you did good. You did good. Uh, if you don't know what that joke is, then go back and listen to the episode that we did on... Brain! <laughs> is that what you wanted? Yes, that's okay. exactly what I wanted. I figured. All right. Um, no English dub. We watched it subbed, yep, as we, we mentioned on Amazon Prime. And let's see. The music. I liked the music. I don't really remember the music... It didn't detract... It, in the show. Right. It, as far as the soundtrack went, it didn't detract at all. No. There was never a time where I was like, what are they doing there? You no. know? So, uh, in that sense, I, I don't know if... It wasn't memorable in wasn't that memorable. sense, but the end track and the beginning track definitely were oh, yeah. memorable and, oh, yeah. and, and really good. Like, the I really intro and outro them. were mm -hmm. amazing. Probably, as far as production value, probably yep. the best. And the outro is definitely one of those that you need to watch each time because yeah, there's changes. changes. Yep. Yeah. And you have to watch through because there's a little, sometimes there's a little 10, 15 second snippet of more to the show. After the outro. Right, and it's not, oh, in next week's episode. No. It's actually part of the It's part of show, the story. So don't yep. let it autoplay on you. No. You know, definitely you want to watch it because it's nothing that, it's never anything that's going to be like, oh, that I missed a complete plot point. Right. But it's definitely it adds, adds to the it adds overall to it. Yep. feel and fun. Absolutely. 
So aesthetically, it's very pleasing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see how some people it would be off-putting, especially if they're used to the polished. I wouldn't say polished. I don't know if that's the right word no, I'm looking I thought for. It, I thought it had a, it had no. It had a really polish, good yeah. yeah. It had a really good look. And to I it. like the simplicity of the backdrop with it being very character driven. Yeah. So I was able to focus on the characters yeah. and not focus on. So I've been watching. Um, I kind of stopped, but um, I'll probably pick it back up again. I've been watching. Um, Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss, and one of the kind of downsides of that for me has been. Yes, it's very character driven, but there's so much gorgeous scenery and stuff mm-hmm. in the background that's happening in the background that I kind of am dis- di- uh, distracted from the characters themselves, okay. and therefore a little bit from the story because I'm watching, you know, the the backdrop a little bit because yeah. it is gorgeous. It's very well painted. It's just beautiful. Um, but um, in this one, because the landscape is so stark, it's dark. Yeah. Um, it's it's buildings that are very repetitive. Um, when you have the the girls and um, what, what is his name Watanaba Wakaba Wakaba yeah no, and it Watanaba. started with a W sorry <laughs> I'm not good with Poor names and I'm really bad with Japanese names but um, they really stood out because mm-hmm. of the background so mm-hmm. yeah whatever yeah so some people I from what I was reading online some people love it some people hate it yeah um, but I think. If anything, it's deserving of a watch. Sure, and it's a it's a fun kind of filler anime, yeah. and like I said, it's 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 very clean. There's no yeah. real adult themes going on yeah. there, so it's very simple and it's uh-huh. story and presentation and everything. So it's good. So it's good to watch with with uh, kids, with yeah. younger set. Yeah. All right, so let's kind of head into the characters. You want to sure. head into the characters? Yeah. All right, let's do that. So, as I mentioned in the synopsis, it's centered around six sisters. Right. But which six sisters are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> well, you basically have three main characters um, in, as far as the sisters go. Mm-hmm. Um, you have uh, uh, Ritsu. Nyan. Yeah, she's the cat girl um, who has an affinity for a tree, mm-hmm. uh, which is a green leaf-based uh, Which I loved, actually, how they traveled around. Yeah, it was in, it was, it was the, different. It was cool. In the broken trolley with the tree growing out of it, and they used the roots of the tree yep. and the branches and everything to move around. Yeah, and, and, and it, you, got, you kind of got the feeling that a tree might be sentient in and of itself. Yes. It was a character in and of itself. Yes, yes. Um, and then you have Rena, who is actually split into multiple personalities. <laughs> um, so you have multiple Renas, yeah. and that's the um, maid little girl maid. Yeah. Um, but she is, was the most annoying out of all. She's of them. the most annoying, but mm-hmm. kind of, um, kind of is the comedic relief, I mm-hmm. think. And then you have Rin, who's the fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, she's out to protect her sisters and protect her world. And she mm-hmm. kind of is their de facto leader. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then they, they happen across the boy who just appears in their water tank. Yep. Wakaba is kind of our connection to the world. Because when we first see the sisters, we're seeing them do odd things. We're first introduced to this world as it being, they're searching for water. And we're seeing Rena, or I'm sorry, Rin, like jump very far distances. Yeah, like and, think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon Yeah, yeah. So you're, so you're getting this idea of they're not human. But she's a magical girl. Yeah. And they, they, they're they all that, magical They have girls. that magical yeah. girl. Right, right. So, but you're not sure where you're at yet. You know, looks like Earth. Wakaba is definitely our connection to right. the world. Right. He's, um, in he's, fact, when, when he's wounded, they think he's one of the bad guys, a red bug. Because he bleeds because red. Because he bleeds red. Right. And the only time they see that vibrant red color is with the red fog and the red bugs, which right. are the, the bad guys, if you will. Right. But um, he's kind of annoying at first because he's a little wimpy. He's, he's like definitely wimpy, yeah. and he's he's the guy who's I'm curious about everything. Yeah, yeah. How does this work? How does this work? Yeah. And so you're always you're kind of afraid. Like in my mind, oh, this means there's going to be some kind of crazy info dump where there's going to be an entire episode, oh, yeah. like in the first two or three episodes of. Nothing this but, is... here's the mechanics of this world. <laughs> you need to understand this completely or else you will not be able to enjoy this anime. Right, right, right. And I, I hate that. I want to explore the world with the characters. Yeah. Not 
have to be brought up to speed. Right, right. You know? Yeah. He does kind of grow on you, though, because he, you know, shows this selflessness, you know, in the in his acts of bravery and saving yeah. uh, one of the Rena's. Um, and his courage, he's, he's actually very courageous, mm-hmm. but his courage doesn't come from a sense of duty, necessarily, mm-hmm. as much as... This is just the right he's way a, to do things. He's a compassionate person. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is the right way to handle this. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the bugs are bad mm-hmm. because they're trying to hurt these girls. Mm-hmm. These girls are a lot like me, so I need to help them. Right. You know? Right. Some of my favorite interactions with uh, Wakaba was with, Sh- is it Shiori? The little robot thing? The little bug, yeah. Yeah. The little white bug. The little white bug, yeah, that's following him around, and he's communicating yeah, he's like with a it. Robot. They can't read what it's putting up on the screen. They can't read, right? And but he, he can. He can. He's able to read. So then he'll read out loud what it says, and it'll say something like "Rin is obstinate." Yeah. <laughs> and and she gets all upset that he said that. Well, and and, he, and, and she's, she's not like, sure if it's because it's a mushy bug. Uh huh. And it's actually out to get her. Yeah. Or if it's him and he's like... Yeah, because she doesn't trust him. Right. She yeah. doesn't really quite trust him. So yeah. maybe he's just being mean to her. Yeah. And she's not really quite sure because her sisters kind of tease her a little bit. And you his, know? his line that he says is, Boku janai desho! Boku janai desho! <laughs> Which cracked me up. Um, you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, but I really liked how that relationship kind of developed. You know, she... Kept saying he's poisoned because she would... Uh, she would get embarrassed and yeah, flush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel weird in front of him. <laughs> yeah. So you end up, even though the characters are a, a little bit alien or a little bit annoying, they tell the story in a way that you're like, I'm really kind of like. Yeah, they start characters. engaging you within yeah. the first couple episodes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not as if it it's going to take you like, oh, you have to watch through the first five episodes Mm-mm. before you start feeling anything about these no, characters. No. You really start feeling for them in the first episode. Actually, one of the Renas dies. Yes. And you're like, what the... What, what? what just happened? <laughs> the little girl just died. <laughs> yeah. And you don't know there's multiple Renas. Right. So you don't realize necessarily right away that, oh, it's probably going to be okay. Yeah. You're just like, well, that was abrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was annoying, but wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and death is a theme here, so if yeah. if that's something that is going to um, be a problem for a younger person, that that's definitely something to be aware of. Yeah. Is is that is a I guess the most adult thing that happens in this mm-hmm. uh, in the show is is there is a lot of talking about death or mm-hmm. dying or mm-hmm. um, losing people that you love. Yep. Yep. Um. I think we already mentioned that Rin is the driving force and the leader of the group. But she's kind of a um, reluctant leader. She doesn't necessarily she doesn't really want know. to lead. She just knows it's her duty to lead. Yeah, yeah. So. And they all follow her lead. She takes on the responsibility of the care of her sisters. And she car- she carries, personally carries the weight of the yeah. deaths and, of the previous sisters. And she does. And the other ones are just kind of... Like, laissez-faire about it. Like, oh, well, these things happen. You know, they did what they liked. Right. You hear that a lot. Oh, they did what they liked. Yeah. You should do what you like. And she's like, well, what I like is for everybody to survive and have water. (laughs) You know, so I'm not quite sure what what you want of me here. Yeah, so I would consider her the heart of the group. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although there's definitely... um, there's definitely an argument to be made for Ritsu being the heart of the group. Mm-hmm. Um, she was definitely the motherly mm-hmm. um, one of them. And she also gave of herself to make sure that the sisters were taken care of. Yeah. Um, yep. So, because it, it was taxing on her to control Midori and to um, move the trolley and, and stuff. No, that, that was Ritsu. I'm talking about Reen. Reen's the... I, I, I know. That's what I'm saying. Ritsu, there's oh. also an argument to be made for oh, her oh, okay. being... So the cat, you're saying that the cat girl... Of the heart of the group. You said the heart of the group, so... I said Reen is is the heart of the group. I know. I said (laughs) there's an argument to be made for Ritsu being the heart of the group. Sam, I'm all confused now. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. I got it. I got it. Did not even hear me. I got it. Yes. (laughs) So as, as far as it goes... Kind of, Reen is I would I would think more the head of the group, okay. like the leader, uh-huh. the 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 thinker of uh-huh. the group. Uh-huh. Where Ritsu is more of the emotional heart of the group. Okay, she's the one who sort of 
she actually gives it herself physically mm -hmm. for her um, sisters. I have a little bit of a different take on it as well. Okay. But. Yeah. So in episode 11 mm -hmm. is when we... That's when we get our info dump, we finally. Get, we get the reveal. We get the big reveal about what's been happening in the world, what happened to the world. Right. Because, th and it's one of the things I enjoy about this type of story. This has nothing to do with it being an anime. Mm -hmm. I like wondering. I like thinking. I like exploring. Mm -hmm. So when I'm able to, again, not be told everything, but kind of like, what Discover is going it, on? Yeah. Like, puzzle it out a little bit. You know, let me think about this. How did this happen? Yeah. Um. Because that's the question that you're left asking the whole time is, how did this happen? This is right. clearly like Earth or Earth-like What are the Kamurikusa and why is yeah. it, you know, what, ha where's, what happened to all the What's people? What's with the red bugs, and, which yeah. red bugs are clearly like some sort of robot, but mm -hmm. now they're like possessed to kill the girls. Yeah, and, sort of and they have and, some sort of sentience thing yep. going on. And yep. Mm -hmm. So we're we're completely lost as to what's going on. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, the girls are also completely lost yep. as to what's really going on. Yep. So the name of their game is survival. Yep. It's it's literally all it is is we must survive, mm -hmm. um, and find what we like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. find what we enjoy. Mm -hmm. So in episode eleven, uh -huh. we get a flashback. Yep. Because. Um, as the story progressed, uh, Wakaba finds a journal leaf, and he finally finds out that Reen possesses the memory leaf, and he convinces her, "Let me, let me touch. Let the, me have your memory. Yeah, let me yeah. touch the memory leaf." And so that's when we see everything. So he's able to see their memories that they don't even they can't they even don't physically even access. Yeah. So it's like a hidden memory. Right. Right. Um, so we see Wakaba. Yes, as an adult. Yes. And in the, in the past, apparently he was some sort of like engineer mm -hmm. that was involved in 3D printing, is what it looks like, <laughs> yeah. an environment, like an artificial environment maybe, right. or a new earth, or it shows him, rebuilding earth, it shows or him, something along those it lines. It looks exactly like 3D printed yep. buildings. But he's 3D printing buildings and cities uh -huh. and trees uh -huh. and animals and all sorts of things. I mean, he's he's like the guy in charge of doing this. Uh -huh. And he has a little girl with him uh -huh. who's, who's, he found, he found this little girl. We don't know how. Uh -huh. But come to find out, the little girl is actually all of the sisters, um, and she has within her the ability to manipulate the Kamurakusa, which are somehow associated with that 3D building of, of yeah, things. Yeah, we're not sure. We're and not this really is, quite sure what the relationship this is, is. This is where your your sense of wonder still comes in. Yeah. Because we don't know, are they on Earth, or are they... On a different planet. Right. And then there's the, what are the Kamura... We still don't know what the Kamura Well, we know the Kamura ha have interfaces that allow people to interact with them and right. control them. Right. Um, to, they can create doors and so, shields yeah, and so build we don't know, things. Right. So we don't know if the Kamura were invented or right. created or found. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. We don't know any of that. But the little girl, Riri... Um, she's able to manipulate them yeah. and, and, and just combine like them. In, just like Wakaba. Right. Yeah. But she's doing things that even Wakaba isn't yeah. able or willing to do. Right. Um, and she creates the red tree. She creates the red root. And the yeah. red tree, the red root, creates the red fog, the red bugs. Mm -hmm. And that's what causes the destruction of the entire world around them. Yep. And come to find out, Apparently, the destruction of adult Wakaba. Yep. So, in her desperation, because she doesn't know that he's dead yet, she is writing out the journal, and she breaks herself into six Kamurikusa, which mm -hmm. are the sisters. Yep. Um, and in doing so, she does see a vision of Wakaba dead. At least we think he's dead. It's right. pretty... Pretty well obvious. It, it, we're pretty certain he's yeah, dead. Yeah, And so then she basically puts it within the journal to, instead of trying to save Wakaba, because that was the original With mission. Their prime directive yeah, of, the, of, the, she, of the sisters. She scratches it out and says, do what you love. love. Yeah. Yep. 
Which becomes so, their new overriding prime directive. Yes. So the sisters all have aspects of Riri in the sense that Ritu, right. it, it's like the sen- the five they senses. Have, they have it's her like, mind, they have her ability to see uh-huh. uh, Kamurakusa, they have her ability to, one of them has the ability to read, but none of the other ones do. Right. Um, so each of them have like a special select ability. Yeah. Um, and and mind you, their original prime directive was to protect Wakaba. Yeah. Um, but when she basically converts into the individual personalities of the sisters, mm-hmm. that's overridden by "do what you like," mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is kind of a kind of a vague notion in yeah. and of itself. Yeah. It doesn't really give any kind of satisfaction or fulfillment. Right. And I think that's Reen's problem is. What she likes, she doesn't understand what she likes. She never finds what she likes right. in the whole story. Right. She just knows, I don't know what I like. Right. Until she meets Wakaba. Yep. And then she determines eventually, at the end, mm-hmm. big spoiler. Yep. That's what she likes is Wakaba. Yep. It was so cute. It was cute. It was very cute. I was like, it was definitely, it definitely had that trope of big, strong girl. Uh, still needs a man to take care of her uh-huh. type of thing. Uh-huh. Kind of like what you see in, uh, like, SAO with Asuna. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a massively powerful character, but I still need a man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but not in a bad sense. It wasn't bad. No. I, I'm not complaining. Okay. I just, it, it was there. It was and cute. if that bothers you in a trope, then yeah. you're probably going to be annoyed by this anime. Yeah, so. yeah. So basically the story at first turns in, was just a, we're surviving... We're looking for water. Right. And then And do turns, what you like. Yeah, and do what you like. Um, but then it turns into this kind of cool... It's a quest. It becomes little, a quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's we still have to find water, mm-hmm. but now we have this dude with us who is interested in the things around us and mm-hmm. kind of is helping us see things with new eyes. So we're going to go find water with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and they push beyond any limit that they've ever been before. Right. Um, they go further than they've ever been. They see things that they've never seen in all their tr- journeys and travels. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. So listen in to our cool little commercial. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll teach you how to get some ketchup on a Japanese. Ketchup at a Japanese? It's Japanese what? At okay, a Japanese? Okay, 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 ketchup. Okie ketchup. All right, guys. Uh, we'll be back after this break. And now it's time for Learning Japanese with Redeemed Otaku. Ketchupu wa doko desu ka? Ketchupu wa doko desu ka? Where's my ketchup? Where's my ketchup? Ketchupu wa doko desu ka? Y'all. Welcome back. So, if, again, it's, this is your first time listening to our show, we do something a little bit different. Mm. There isn't a whole lot of information on uh, Kamurakusa, but if you want to find out more about the lore and stuff, you can search a lot of that online. People, there's a wiki. There's a wiki. There's nothing else that'll there's, help you keep the arenas apart. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. And there's there's people who've, who've blogged about it. Yeah. And there's a couple YouTubers. It's not 2019's most popular anime no. by any means. No. And it never will be. No. I mean, that's not what this is. No. Um, but what we do with our show is we try to delve into a little bit of the worldview, maybe a little bit of the underlying philosophy that's driving the characters and their motivations. Um, But we also try to bring it back to what the Bible has to say about all this. Absolutely. So. Well, my big takeaway is it, it was a constant theme. It was a constant kind of droning, underpinning theme in every episode. Find what you like. Find what you enjoy. Find what you like. And um, what's interesting is the worldview of the girls was essentially as long as you find what you like, you can die happy. Mm -hmm. You can just evaporate into the ether and become part of the whole. And you've at least done what you've enjoyed. All of them had that mentality except for Mm Ring. Ring did not have that mentality. Her mentality was 
that's not that's not enough. Yeah. Just to do something that I like and then to die is not enough. Yep. And what's what I find interesting, the parallel I find interesting is um with with the real world, if you will. <laughs> that's kind of the philosophy of the world. Yes. Is do what you like before you die. Yeah. Um, you'll hear it all the time. And and it's not even necessarily a bad thing to say, but you, you'll hear people say, uh, when you're when you're working, find something that you like. Uh-huh. You know? Work or, or live in so a you job don't have, that you like. Live so you don't have any regrets. Right. right. Live mm-hmm. so you have no regrets, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so you can die a good death, you yep. know. Yep. Go back to the Klingon thing. Yeah. Die a good death, you know. And that's what this was all about is yeah. hey, as long as you lived a good life, when you, you die, you that's a fulfillment that's in and of itself. Yeah. That's exactly what I had here. Um it was kind of funny because I was <sighs> I always tend to like agonize over this portion. Like, what am I going to talk about? And, um, (laughs) so when I came home from work today, I was like, I still didn't really know what I was going to talk about. And you had your thing. You're like, Oh, I got it. I got it. And I'm like, Oh no. (laughs) So I spent a little time and kind of walked through the show and, you know, just reminded myself of a lot of the things that were being said and done. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I came to the conclusion with, is as humans created in God's image, we know and desire to have purpose. Yeah. Uh, but because of sin, we seek purpose from all the wrong things, yes. work, play, toys, self, just to name a few. Um, some may even go so far as to pursue noble ideals to better humanity, but ultimately it is to appease their conscience and continue to believe the lie that they can have purpose in and of themselves without God. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that was the difference between, um, Reen and her sisters mm. is, is Reen was looking for more than what I like, but for a purpose. Yeah. And the, the girls, the other girls didn't need a purpose. They just, well, do what you like. Yeah. But in reality, Reen's goal was to give the other girls a purpose as well. Sure. She wanted to give them a reason for oh, yeah. living, that's a why, reason for surviving. That's why the deaths of her previous sisters weighed so weighed heavily so on her. Heavily because on for her. her, it was like they did what they liked, but that's not enough. Right, right. That's not enough. And there was a little bit of a redemptive arc with those sisters yeah. when they kind of made a appearance yeah. and helped her to find her purpose. Yeah. Um, but it, you know... It, it still was a bit shallow in the sense that ultimately they were still doing what they liked, yeah. which is helping their sister. Yeah. And you know. fighting. And, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Um, very smart people, smarter than me, sat down a long time ago mm. and said, you know, we need to come up with a set of instructions for little kids and for people who are having a hard time understanding God's word. Mm. And we're going to put it in a question and answer format. We're going to call it a catechism. What? Oh, I know. It's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? And we're going to answer the big questions. Yes. And back in, oh, I don't know, the 1600s, in 1648, what? in the Church of Scotland. <laughs> um, and it, uh, the, they came up with something called the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And the very first question of the catechism is, what is the chief end of man? Mm. And if you know no other answers to catechism questions, you ought to know this one. You yep. ought to have this one memorized. Yep. So what is because the chief... Because this is number one. This is number one. <laughs> what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is, is to, to glorify, glorify God, God and, and to enjoy, enjoy him, him forever. forever. Um, and helpfully, the Church of Scotland said, well, we can't just put that on paper. We have to have some scripture to back that up. Right. So man's chief end is to glorify God. Romans 11. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him that it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. And then in Revelation chapter 4, we read, and this is the old song. The old song. The old song was sung. Uh, the four beasts, 
had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Our purpose as humanity, as people created in the image of God, is to worship God. It yep. is to enjoy God, and it is to glorify God forever. One of the um, things I had written here real quick, because no, I think go it ahead. fit right in, is in Ephesians chapter 1, when Paul is going through the roles of salvation, I guess you could call it, you know, God elects the Spirit. The, the golden chain of redemption. Well, no, this is in Ephesians. Oh, in oh, Ephesians. In okay. Ephesians, right. God elects the Except Spirit. The something. Spirit is the... Um, Oh, that's the word I'm looking for now. The down payment. The, okay. Right? The and, earnest. Yes, the earnest. And Jesus, um, you know, it's through his his work. And it's all, it's like the refrain repeats itself each time. To the praise of his glory. To the praise yes, of his glory. To the praise to of his, his glory. glory. It's all to his glory. That is our purpose. And Reen doesn't know what her purpose is. Mm -hmm. What is my purpose? And ultimately, her purpose is still left kind of vague, to be yeah. honest with you. It's, because at the end, what what do we see? We see them together, but they're together, right? And and actually, we find out another big spoiler here yeah. uh, that they're on some kind of ship, right? That's floating in space, apparently <laughs> above above a what looks like Earth, land of mountains and right. fields and water, water more water and than they so can the even last imagine. scene is leaving yeah. essentially the ship to yeah. Earth, yeah. Um, so, but the <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but back to back um, but to the in, in a mechanism. sense, that is our purpose: is yes. to glorify God now on this earth, which is broken and which is not living up to the purpose that God right. created it for. Right. To one day be on a new heaven and yep. a new earth that will be perfect according yes. to God's yes. purpose. Romans eight chapter eight um, talks about this actually. How the uh, the whole earth is in travail, and I mean the whole the whole chapter is excellent. I can't just read the whole chapter because it kind of right. layers <laughs> upon itself. Um, but the the one verse that I want to throw out there is the the one that's most readily quoted: Romans eight twenty eight. For we know all things work together for good. What things are he's talking about? The things of the trials and tribulations right. and the, the groaning and the, the, yeah. the, the sacrifices and the uh, persecutions that they're experiencing. Um, we know that all these things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Right. Mm. Very good. Mm. I just got chills. Yeah. <laughs> and it's warm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's... Man's chief end to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. In um, 1566, the Reformed Church finalized, um, in, in, in the Netherlands, finalized or adopted the Heidelberg Catechism, mm -hmm. which had been crafted a couple of years before in Germany. Um, the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism is, what is your only comfort in life and death? Mm. And consider this. The whole theme of Kamutakusa is survive. Mm-hmm. Do what live you love. a good life, yep. and then it's okay to die. Yep. But there's no comfort there. Mm -mm. There really isn't. And that was Reen's issue. And they and they try to comfort themselves, right? Because well, they're like, well, at least I got to. In a I sense, know. the most of the girls were fine with that. Yeah. But Reen was not fine with that. She right. knew that there was no comfort there. Right. And she needed more. Yep. Um. Well, Reen, if I could talk to you, <laughs> <laughs> even though I think you were 3D printed, and I don't even know where that would go. Theologically, um, <laughs> what is your only comfort in life and death? That I am not my own, but belong with body and soul, both in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood, 
and has set me free from all the power of the devil. He also preserves me in such a way that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready from now on to live for him. Mm. So your only comfort is Christ. Yeah. In both life and in death. Yeah. And the only way you're going to live a good life is if you're living it in Christ for Christ. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to have a good death is if you have lived for Christ and if you're resting in his finished work. Mm. So, guys... Find your eternal and good purpose in Jesus. That is the call that we have for you today. Amen. Mm. Well, that is awesome. (laughs) I was actually really, really excited to discover that you came with the same conclusion. And that is just so much fun. And one of the reasons why I love doing this, because it's like, yes, the Bible actually speaks Exactly to what this show was talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, that's awesome. That's all I had. That's all I have. And I think that's all we need. That's <laughs> all we need. So, guys, um, if you want to contact us, you can actually email us at redeemedotaku at gmail.com. We would love to have any sort of questions that you may have about anything that you've heard, either on this episode or on previous episodes. We we love your interactions. Um, you can also e- I'm sorry, not email. You can also leave us a voicemail. Yes. At seven seven three nine eight zero sixty eighty eight. I had to uh, actually call it myself the other day because it's like. Oh, you haven't used your voicemail in like three months. You better use it or you're going to lose the number. Somebody call us. (laughs) Somebody please call. (laughs) Carrie Gephardt. Yes, do it, please. If you're listening, (laughs) I'm shouting out Five for Fruit right now. You all should listen to Five for Fruit. Number one reco. (laughs) Go listen to the podcast Five for Fruit. And if you're listening, I want you to... (laughs) <laughs> Leave a voicemail, and I will read the transcript. Yes, as we all know, the Google transcripts. Yes, of Carrie Gephardt are the best. Excellent. I would. Do we? Do we know? Yes, that? we know that. Oh, why do from, we know that? From the Reformed Outlook podcast. Oh, I don't listen to Reformed Outlook. Oh, there is no more Reformed Outlook. Sad reacts oh, only. Okay. Well, that's an inside joke. That's way, way, way inside. Uh-huh. Hey, only the elite know these things. I guess so. Um, okay, so follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And Minds, for whatever Mines, that's worth. Minds, for what it's worth, yeah. Um, YouTube, we've been putting some videos yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, check out our YouTube channel, guys. We've been doing some interesting things, different stuff. Um, I think I'm going to try and put up our review episode, like, audio form of this, because I think Kamurakusa deserves to be talked about. Sure. Um, so I'll probably see if I can put that up in an audio format on YouTube. Cool. And, oh, Join us in the Reformed Anime Hub on Facebook, because that's an awesome group, and you can talk more about some of this stuff all day long, except on Sundays. <laughs> so, anything else? Any other recos? No, that's all I have. I think that's all I have. So, I just want to say, this has been the best episode we have ever done. At least today. <laughs> Which is June 29th, 2019. Yes. (laughs) All right, guys. So until next time, redeem your love for anime by turning back to the truth found only in God's word. Say goodbye, Tim. Goodbye. Man!
bloopers. Produced by Studio Yaoyo Zoo. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> Let me try yeah. that again. Meow. So, as I mentioned in the synopsis, it's centered around six sisters. Or cats. 